Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Motu recently released Digital Performer version 11, and there are a ton of great enhancements in this new release. Let's get started checking them out. There are so many great new features in Digital Performer. Let's dive in and get started with one of the big changes, which is version 2 of the Nano Sampler instrument. Let's go ahead and add a Nano Sampler over down here. This is version 2, and it features a completely redesigned user interface here. And there are a lot of nice new features within this user interface that are very useful when you're creating music. First of all, we now have three playback modes, Classic, One Shot, and Slice, that give you more possibilities for working with your sounds. We also have ZTX Time Stretching. So if we enable stretching here, we can see ZTX Stretch Mode here. We've got Standard, and we also have Format Corrected versions available. A big new addition is the Settings tab. When we open this up, we now have access to the Amplitude Envelope, Filter, Filter Envelope, the LFO as well. Back on the Sample page, we now have Trigger and Gate Playback. We also now have new Snap Start and End Points for Sample, Slice, and Loop, which help prevent clicks when you're playing back samples. We also now have a Sample Gain Control, and we have Fade In and Fade Out for samples. We also have Repeat and reverse settings, and there's now support for 32-bit and 64-bit floating point sound files. Another big addition is articulation maps, which allow you to access many articulations within large sound libraries, like orchestral sound libraries, where you might use key switching or other controls to change what articulations are playing back on a given note. We can create maps for those inside Digital Performer, and in fact, you can even do it by syncing to some of the libraries. So if we go up here to Project, we come down here to Articulation Map Setup, we can see that we have articulation maps here. We can add a new map. We can title that map. We can add articulations here. We can choose symbols for various articulations. So when you're looking at a music score, you can see those. We can also sync to the articulation map that comes with a given orchestral library or virtual instrument by clicking here. Now, I don't have one installed, so it's not going to come up. We can remap. We can learn via MIDI. We can set the output for all of these different things. So you can do a lot with setting up a custom articulation map for any of your libraries. Digital Performer now includes support for MPE, or MIDI Polyphonic Expression, which is something that's included with things like the uh, Rolly Seaboard, where each note has a ton of different expression controllers that are transmitted over different channels and things. All that can be included into a single track and edited very easily within Digital Performer. There's even a new scale tool. So if we open up the toolbar, you can see down here, this is the new scale tool that allows you to very easily work with that data inside of lanes when you're editing in Digital Performer. And we have per note expression control within Digital Performer as well. So there's a lot of support for these new protocols that are being developed within MIDI. An important addition is audio retrospective record. And just like everything else in Digital Performer, it's super intelligent. Now what this does is whether you're not playing back or whether you're playing back, even if you don't have a track in record, Digital Performer is still capturing MIDI and audio data, and you can insert that into tracks in a lot of different ways. You can choose the tracks, you can choose where it's inserted, you can choose to quantize it or not quantize it. So again, a very intelligent approach to retrospective recording so you never miss anything, even if you're just jamming along without Digital Performer playing back. For those using Digital Performer for live performance, there's a new live performance mode. Now, normally, pre-gen creates effects ahead of time, and this reduces the real-time load on the computer. So if we watch our meters here, you can see the pre-gen bar is active here. But if we go to Setup and Engage Live Performance Mode, now all those effects are going to be generated in real time. And this makes Digital Performer more responsive for live performance. If we watch here, we'll see we have more real-time on our bar, but zero pre-gen. Working with chunks in Digital Performer is even easier now. First of all, we can now add folders. So we have new chunk folders that allow you to organize your chunks. But we can also do split view. This allows you two views of chunks. You could, for example, drag here. It's reflected down here. So you can work in two different ways, which makes it much easier to manage your chunk list. MIDI tracks now support multiple channels. So you can have up to 16 channels in a single MIDI track. You access this by setting the MIDI input for the track to any, and now up to 16 channels can be recorded into that single track. And with that extra data, we now have a channel selector here in the track selector, and this allows us to determine what channels we're looking at. 
If we jump over to the clips window, we can now control clips using a pad controller, like the Akai APC40 or the Novation Launchpad Pro. You can trigger individual clips or complete scenes, and you can also control filters and more. Speaking of control, Digital Performer 11 now supports the complete control series from Native Instruments, the QCon Pro family from Icon, there's enhanced support for Avid UCon, there's also enhanced support for MCU and Huey controllers. A new command in the Tracks window, which is Transpose Exclude right here, allows you to exclude certain tracks when you're transposing in regions. So you just activate that for a given track and it won't be transposed. Over in the Sequence window, we have additional track and clip effects. So if we pull down here, we can reveal on MIDI tracks, we now have quantize effects, as well as transpose effects for that track. And on audio tracks, we can transpose, and we can also detune. Over in the clips window, we have a new empty clip scene, which allows us to add empty clips all the way across that particular scene. And we also have a double clip loop feature that doubles the length of the loop portion in a clip. Under Setup, we can now tell DP11 to follow the system settings. So if we follow system settings, if we make a change to the audio settings in the Mac itself, that will be reflected right inside Digital Performer. There are many more enhancements in Digital Performer 11 as well. For Mac users, if you haven't selected an audio interface, it will intelligently choose one for you from those that are available. We also have text scaling for certain views. In Windows, text rendering has been improved for a crisper look. In the Mixer, we have dynamically resizable faders. Finally, Digital Performer 11 is fully qualified for Mac OS Big Sur and for Apple Silicon Macs. As you can see, there are a ton of great enhancements in Digital Performer 11. It's a major update. You definitely should check it out because all these features go much deeper than we went here in this video. There's lots more to explore. Be sure to check it out. Digital Performer 11 is a great creative tool for your studio and live rig. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this or start at sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.